We thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we get in, before I get into the message and things of that particular nature, go over to 1 Peter chapter 1 a moment because, you know, part of my job is correcting. Say correcting. That's right. Exhorting, rebuking, edifying. Praise God forevermore. Exhorting. All those particular things, all that's part of my particular job. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Um, before I go there, I want you to go to 2 Kings. Glory be to God. 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. God is good. This morning we have ordination. We got communion. We got someone we're sending away. Praise God forevermore. We're not sending away. They're going away. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but we bless them so that they have a safe trip. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Let's um, look at, oh, let's just look at something real quick. Let's go to uh, 2 Kings chapter 17. I'm going to jump around, but read this on your own. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And let's look at, oh, start at verse 22 a moment. Verse 22. It says, For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam. He was a terrible king. Terrible. Okay, did evil in the sight of the Lord. Notice they walked in what? In all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They did not depart for them. In other words, they kept going on with him. Can you say amen? Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight. As he had said by all his servants, the prophets, he sent the prophets Sometimes they stoned the prophets, killed the prophets, did all kind of things to the prophets. Didn't want to hear the message that God had. Can you say amen? And then it says, he had said by all his servants the prophets, so Israel was carried away from their own land to Assyria, as it is to this day. Okay? Verse 24 says, then the king of Assyria brought people from Babylon. Now notice he brought people from Babylon, Kutha. Ava Hamath, and from Seph Arvim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. All right. And they took possession of Samaria and dwelt in its city. All these different people came from all these different places. And, and notice the king of Assyria, he put them in Samaria instead of children of Israel. In verse 25, and it was so at the beginning of their dwelling there that they did not fear the Lord. And the reason why is because children of Israel walked in the sins of Jeroboam. Okay. And these particular people coming from all these particular places were idolaters. Okay. They were worshiping the one true God. Let's go on. All right. And it says, And it was so at the beginning of their dwelling there that they did not fear the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which killed some of them. All right. So they spoke to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations whom you have removed and placed in the cities of Samaria do not know the rituals of the God of the land. Okay, then it goes on and it says, therefore, he has sent lions among them. And indeed, they are killing them because they do not know the rituals of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, send there one of the priests whom you brought from there. Let him go and dwell there and let him teach them the rituals of the God of the land. In other words, we got to teach you right. Okay? You, 
Israel hasn't been walking in the ways of the Lord. They've been walking in the ways of Jeroboam. But now they got to be taught right. Can you say amen? Yes, then one of the priests, verse 28, whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Now underline that or put it in brackets of how they should fear the Lord. Now, fearing of the Lord is reverencing God. How to reverence God. How to walk with God. All of that is a part of the, of the fear of the Lord. Okay? Not being afraid of God, but learning to walk in the ways of God, in His statutes, obeying what God says. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Notice, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. How they should fear the Lord. All right? How every, however, every nation continued to make gods of its own. All those different people there. And put them in the shrines of the high places which the Sumerians had made. Every nation in the cities where they dwelt. High places where they would go and worship God. And they had their shrines there. And they had all these particular, quote, little G's, what they call gods. But as the Bible says, the gods who have not made these heavens and earth shall perish under these heavens and earth. Okay? That's what God says. If you go into a place, there's a lot of idolatries. Okay? Where people are worshiping statues, worshiping false gods then you speak to those idols and tell them that the gods who have not made these heavens and earth, I mean, you're talking to the statues now, okay, shall perish under these heavens and earth. Okay? We teach that a lot in many different places where Christians live in a home and there's a lot of idols. Their family worships idols. And... Sometimes the spirits that operate behind those idols, they attack believers. Now, the thing about it is, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus says, says, Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Mark 16 tells us, In my name cast out devils. That Philippians 2, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You can pull down strongholds in your family if they're worshiping idols. Because there's no name named above the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay? Everybody see that? All right, let's go on a little bit. Praise God for evermore. Okay? So these particular nations, verse 29, they continue to, to make gods of its own and worship them. All right? Put them in the shrines of the high places which the Samaritans had made every nation in the cities where they dwell. The men of Babylon made Sukkoth, Benoth. The men of Kuth made Nergal. The men of Hamath made Ashima. And the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak. And the Seraphites burned their children in the fire. To, that's, what happened in many of these particular nations? They would sacrifice their children, burn them in the fire to Adramalek and Amalek, the gods of Sepharim. But notice it says, so they feared the Lord and from every class they appointed for themselves priests of the high places who did what? Sacrifice for them in the shrines of the high places. Notice it said they fear the Lord. They fear the Lord. They fear the Lord. You know, in 
many places we have Christian idols. They pray to Christian idols. They fear the Lord. Or well, put it like that, they have acknowledgement of the Lord that there's the one true God. Notice how, how this is worded so we can understand this. And this is where you have to start looking very carefully when you read the Word of God. Don't just zoom over it. Okay? It says, they, in verse 33, it makes it clear, they feared the Lord yet serve their own gods. You see that? They feared the Lord and yet served their own gods according to the rituals of the nations from among whom they were carried away. In other words, they feared the Lord, but they served their own gods. Look at that. Underline that. Because sometimes as believers, there's the fear of the Lord, but we serve the rituals of the culture. And it happens. Or they serve the ways of men. Jesus said in Matthew 15, is you make the word of God of none effect by your tradition. That's for them. Sometimes people serve tradition over what the Word of God says. Some people are, I'm talking about Christians now, are anti-Holy Ghost. <laughs> they say speaking in tongues is of the devil. They have their own traditions. And you see where there's a love of the traditions of men over the love of God or the ways of God. In other words, the ways of God have been distorted and they have been polluted. Notice this is very clear. Notice it says in verse 33, they feared the Lord yet served their own gods. In other words, we're going to do our thing. We're going to do it the way we want it done. See, one of the things when we come into the body of Christ, you and I have to learn to do things God's way. Not our way, not what we think, but what God says to do. We have to do it His way. Can you say amen? That's every aspect of our particular life we have to learn. That's why Jesus says, come, learn of me. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Some Christians carry heavy, heavy burdens. <laughs> and the yoke they put around themselves, not that God puts around them, but what they themselves put around them. All right, let's go. So they fear the Lord, yet serve their own gods according to the rituals of the nations from among whom they were carried away. To this day, they continue practicing the former rituals. They do not fear the Lord, nor do they follow their, their statutes or their ordinances or the law and commandments which the Lord had commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. In other words, they say they feared the Lord. But God says, no, you don't fear me because you're not following my ways. Okay? Now, go over to 1 Peter chapter 1. Glory be to God. Because there are certain things that God holds me accountable for. Okay? Now, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22 it says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with pure heart. Now, this morning, we came in here, we heard songs. And they were songs of doubt and unbelief. They weren't in agreement with what God's Word says. 
it was following a lot of traditions and not following God's word. See, you have to do things according to God's word. Hello. Yes, this is a rebuke. Because we're not to be singing doubt and unbelief. Amen. Number one, God has already purified you. Amen. Jesus purified us. And then it says, since you have purified your souls, obeying the word of God is our purification because we're walking in that purification. Oh, they used to sing this song a whole lot and they still sing it in other places. Cleanse my heart, O oh Lord. Make it ever whatever. Well, God has already cleansed your heart if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Oh, it's a beautiful song and people have tears, but there's a lot of tears that people are crying from their emotions that are not in agreement with God's word. Hello. So I'm rebuking the worship team this morning for singing doubt and unbelief. Because you're leading people down a path of singing doubt and unbelief. Make me holy. You're already holy. That's what the scriptures say. See, sometimes we don't see what the scriptures say. It's like my wife got me that, that wonderful t-shirt that says, I hear you, but I'm not listening. And it's like people hear, but they're not really listening. It is not registering. You see, we are to live by faith. Faith is always now. You see, the reason why a person has trouble walking in holiness is because they don't believe they are holy and the Lord has already made them holy. And you will never, ever w walk in that dimension if you keep believing you have to be holy when in actuality you are holy. That's why many people don't move in the gifts of the Spirit. I've taught this over and over and over and over and over and over again. This is a truth that applies to every particular area. As I say, Christians go around, they go to this seminar, they watch this particular video, they hear this, they hear this, trying to get power. And nothing is really happening in their life. Well... The Lord taught me this years ago, and it's changed the lives of people all over the world. In every nation that we've been to, which is over a uh, hundred nations. Turn to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Glory be to God. See, sometimes we get carried away with certain Christian songs that are very popular. But some of those songs are songs of doubt, fear, and unbelief. Boy, you all are quiet. Can't say amen, say ouch. Look at Acts chapter 1. Hallelujah. And as you have been taught, we've been here two years. We were here with you for two years. As you have been taught, notice faith is now. Say faith, faith. Is, now. is now. When is now? Now. 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 In other words, it's already been done. It's already been accomplished. Some of people are trying to cleanse themselves from sin when Jesus has already cleansed us. See, this is how the devil he nullifies in the minds of people 
what God has done through his son. So we have to watch these areas like that. We can't let the congregation go on and, oh, Lord, please make me holy, make me holy, make me holy, make me holy, make me holy. Oh, Lord, oh, please forgive my sin, forgive my sin, forgive my sin. You're not walking by faith, you're walking by the flesh. And maybe some tradition of how you have been brought up. That's what I, I say a lot of times. We were brought up as Catholics, but we were brought up as Catholics when everything was in Latin, so we didn't know what people were saying. <laughs> we didn't have any Bible. We didn't know any scriptures. I've, you've heard me testify. I never heard of John 3.16. Never heard of it. The only scripture I heard of was Psalm 23. So there was no Bible. It was doctrines of men. Well, Acts chapter 1, I want you to look at this. This is, we've been through this. I've taught you all this. You see, sometimes people, you teach them, and they receive it as if I already know. I can quote that scripture. Big mistake. I tell you that all the time. Big mistake. You want to learn from God, you must humble yourself every time you get in the word of God. As if you've never heard it before. Because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Notice what it says here. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. And you ask a very simple question. When do you get the power? Before you receive the Holy Spirit or after? Then why are you looking for something that you already have? Hello? Hello? Now the devil tricks people, tricks whole congregations, tricks the church in this particular area. He has you looking for something you already have. And you'll never find it. How many here have a nose? Touch it. Got a nose? You got one? Now, if you go looking for your nose, and it's right on your face, you look at it every day, you will never find it. Because as we have taught in the area of faith, is with God, you believe first, and then you see. You must believe you are holy. You must believe you are righteous. You have a lot of Christians trying to be righteous on their own righteousness. Which, as the Bible says, is as filthy rags. Are you all still out there? And see, if you're seeing in doubt and unbelief, or speaking doubt and unbelief. Don't expect a great anointing. God responds to his word. Not to our tears or what's popular in the world. In the things of the world. So these are things that we must watch. We must be in a line with what the word says. The word says. For example, give you another example. Hallelujah. Turn over to Romans chapter 12. Maybe this is my message for today. <laughs> Praise God for evermore. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We look at verse 3. It says, 
as for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt or given to each one a measure of faith. In the old King James, it says the measure of faith. In other words, given, 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 given. God has given us faith. But what do many Christians do? They pray for faith. They fast for faith. How many have a nose? Do you pray and fast for your nose? Because you already possess it. That's the same thing with faith. You already possess it. What you have to do is learn to walk in faith. But you'll never learn to walk in faith if you don't believe you have it. Because the devil will attack you in the area of feelings. He'll attack you in the area of thoughts. And make you think you don't have faith. We've been made right with God through Jesus Christ. You have to believe that by faith. Because your feelings are going to say opposite. Thoughts are going to say opposite to you. That you're not quite right with God. Hello. You won't sell out there. Amen. And the result is you're always trying, always trying. Now see, that's where it comes in. You're always trying on your own strength. On your own understanding. That's why Proverbs chapter 2 is very important. Lean not on your own understanding. You have to believe first what God says. You receive it by faith. Hello. Amen. If you just look at the Gospels, Jesus tells him, your faith made you whole. I have not seen such great faith in Israel. What was that based on? That was based on the man simply believing what Jesus said. And the man sends people to Jesus and tells them, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my will. Just speak the word only. Speak the word only and my servant should be healed. His faith was in Jesus' word. He saw the authority that was in Jesus' word. Everybody see that. See, there's a thin line between faith and doubt and unbelief. Many believers start out in faith, but then they get into Walking by the flesh. You who? Can you say amen? Now, this is our last Sunday here. We want to be nice before we leave out of here. <laughs> but we have to straighten things out. Can you say amen? I can't leave you with here be, be leaving doubt and unbelief. You're wanting to be this, you're wanting to be that. Uh, say, it is, let me just show you another thing. That it's just look at, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Just as you just read the word. Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse 3. How you have been believing. You need to go through the scriptures to see if you've been believing God's way or man's way. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Who has blessed us. Who has blessed us. Who has blessed us. What does that mean? That means it's already been done. It's already accomplished. Hello. Amen. And if I want to appropriate the blessings of that scripture, you know what I have to do? I have to agree with what God says. 
Not according to what religion says. Not according to how I feel. I have to agree with God despite how I feel. I don't feel blessed today. Well, it's not based on feeling. It's based on what God has said. See, sometimes we hear things, but it just doesn't come through here. Turn the person right and left and say, praise God, none of us are like that here. Amen. That's why you and I can, you and I can declare every day we are blessed. Every day we can, week throughout the day, we can declare it. I am blessed. You are blessed. You, you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's why you can declare. See, here you have to understand confession or declaration of the word of God. See, sometimes people are saying it, but it's not really registering. Because the mind is seeing opposite. You know, our mind and our mouth must be in agreement. If our mind, if we're thinking one thing and saying another thing, and feeling, that's our emotions, another thing, then there's no agreement there. We have to go with what? The word says. And be in agreement with what God's word says. If you remember Amos 3.3. 3, Can two walk together except they be agreed? And if you remember, we went through that. We went through that. We went through that. We went through that. Many Christians say they're in agreement with God. But in actuality, they are not in agreement with God. And they're not walking with, with God in whatever area that might be. You have to agree with God that you're healed even when you have pain in your body. Amen. By his stripes, I am healed. Well, I don't understand how he's going to do it. He didn't, he didn't say understand. He said lean not on your understanding. Just believe me. All things are possible to him who believes. Believing what God says. Oh, I have to go to the doctor. But well, the doctor, he's not going to heal you. God says, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. But you keep declaring by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Instead of trying to figure out how is this scripture going to come and take this tumor and get rid of it. Are you all still out there? Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Songs of faith of what God's word says. Over the years. I had a hard time in the beginning in the area of music because I like jazz, I like rock, I like all kind of music. And I did not like Christian music because a lot of the Christian music that I was singing, it made me feel worse. Because there was a lot of going through, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of doubt and unbelief. And as I started growing with God, I would only get certain Christian artists who sang the word, who sang the scriptures. You see, the word is powerful. It penetrates you. When you are going through certain things, it will come up out of your inner man. You all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? It will come out of your inner man. That will comfort you during that particular time. It will strengthen you with whatever you're going through. 
Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, that is my message. Amen. Praise God for evermore. Hallelujah. Oh, some of the songs are so beautiful, but it's full of doubt and unbelief. Not a doubt and unbelief. We are to believe what God's word says. You don't have to see all things are possible to him who believes. Not all things are possible to him who figures out. Remember that. You don't have to figure it out. <laughs> I've learned over the years in my walk with God the way you figure it out is never the way God does it. <laughs> That's my experience. We just simply believe it and let him accomplish it the way he wants to because God likes to be God because God is God. Amen? Let's give Jesus all praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. So you're already, you're already holy? Not based on how you feel. You just have to learn how to walk in holiness. You're already purified. Just obey what God's word says. Just that simple. Never get away from the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's so simple. You don't have to, you don't have to read. You don't have to write. You don't have to go to the university. You just simply hear it and believe it. And you will get results. You heard me give testimony about this lady in Tanzania. She lived in the village. She could not read. She could not write. She heard her pastor speak, Mark eleven twenty three. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And not doubt in her heart, but she shall have what she says. And she had this sapling tree that was over her home, causing her roof to collapse. And she didn't have any money to get it removed. The authorities came and said, you better get this tree out of here. Or we're going to find you and put you in jail. Well... She said, Lord, my pastor said this morning, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things that he says, believe those things that he says, he shall have what he says. And she said, in the name of Jesus, I command you tree to fall and fall away from my house. That's smart. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. You have heard me and given me what I asked for. Three days passed. The tree didn't go nowhere. But on the third day when she was doing her dishes, her house started to rock. She thought somebody ran into the house with their car and she looked outside and the tree fell. Big tree. But it fell in the road on the road that everybody had to drive. Well, the result is she said, Lord. She cried unto the Lord. <laughs> she said, Lord, because the authorities came out. And the authority said, move this tree. You're blocking the road. Look at all of that. The chaos is caused because of your tree. She said, Lord, I don't have any money to move this tree. And the result was a man came along, asked her, is this your tree? She said, yes. He said, I'll pay you if you let me have that tree because I need this wood. Yeah. Very simple. 
Can you say amen? amen? And the result was he paid her for removing the tree. He got the wood and the money that she had left over, it repaired her roof that that tree had destroyed. <laughs> All glory to God. All glory to God. Can you say amen? amen? She heard it, what the scripture said. She believed what the scripture said, and she applied the scripture. Just that simple. Can you say amen? amen. God is good. Let's give Jesus all praise, honor, and glory, and thanksgiving right now. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. We're going to partake of communion right now.